Here's yet another new toy I've recently added to my camcorder collection. It's a Mini DV Canon GL1. I've always wanted one of these camcorders. Ironically, I'm actually recording this video on a Canon GL2. The number of Canon GL1 and GL2 cameras that are selling for fair market value used are really few and far between. It's rather unfortunate how some folks think that these things are practically gold bars because, uh, well, they're not. <laughs> They've been outmoded by HD, HDV camcorders, and now 4K, 60P, all that sort of thing. Also came with this. It's a lithium-ion camera camcorder battery. It's funny how it makes no mention anywhere of its being compatible with the Canon GL1, GL2, and XL1 and XL2. You just have a model number here, CN-BP970, which mm, I believe that's one of the high capacity batteries Canon sold for these series cameras. And comes in a plastic bag. And I wonder how powerful this is. 62.9 watt hours, 8500 milliamp hours. P970. So despite these having been discontinued by Canon, they're still very expensive used, so if you find one that's under $200, definitely take and seize the opportunity because it doesn't happen too often. Most people, like I said, think that they're sitting on a, a reserve of gold bars when they're listing these things for sale. Yeah, and this is not going to be an all-encompassing review. I am not an expert. I've only had about two days with this camcorder and I've not been using it all that much because I've been using this GL2 but it's not without its own peccadillos which will no doubt be covered in a future video of mine. You have a neutral density filter which that is going to be a very useful feature. An automatic and manual focus button and digital effects on and off which enables or disables anything like color modes or fader effects. You have a zoom wheel here which works independent of the automatic and manual focus button so if you're in automatic mode and it gets stuck and it can't focus you can just grab this wheel and adjust it and it'll switch to manual focus automatically and the minute you let go and stop moving it it'll go back to automatic focus so that's very useful exposure button which you're you are to push in and then adjust it accordingly you have two buttons for the white balance one is for using some preset white balance settings and the other one is used for manually adjusting the white balance. You just put a, something white, like a sheet of white paper in front of the lens, press that button, and then it calibrates the white balance accordingly. Very useful because despite having and using these LED high efficiency lights, a lot of camcorders still don't get the white balance right and end up making everything a, a sickly shade of orange. You have a button for enabling and disabling the image stabilization if for whatever reason you deem it necessary to do so as well as a mode selector switch fully automatic and then there's regular automatic which does give you some manual control TV AV and manual as well as a spotlight mode as well as I think that's sun or perhaps snow mode I'll just leave it on regular automatic power on camera and VCR switch just like you would with Sony Handycams and a lot of other camcorders from this time period power indicator record search, a remote sensor, a menu button, and a jog wheel here. Now, I know that this was designed by Canon this way, but I, little, it's a little inconvenient. You have to pull out the viewfinder, push it up, and that's how you're able to remove the battery because if this is pushed down, there's no way for you to remove the battery. It stays locked in place. You have your DV in, remote, EV out and AV in jack and S video in and out because this does do analog real time conversion just like with uh, Sony Handycams. It'll convert it to digital over Firewire so you can use this as a capture card of sorts. You have a headphone jack, stereo, conveniently located on the back of the camera, a standby lock and record button, and a movie mode if you want to record frame by frame for stop motion. You just switch it accordingly. And a photo button, your zoom control, you have your DC 5 volt input, which is probably going to be for accessories and not for charging the camcorder. I don't believe that these ever had any provisions or way to charge the battery while having it attached to the camcorder. You did have to remove it. have this hand strap here, which is suffering from the same thing that plagues a lot of the Sony hand straps. 
and then as this uh, coating is just deteriorating such that it keeps coming off on your hands but after some use it does wear off completely you can see that's what I was talking about stereo PCM left and right microphone very high quality really quite impressive if I didn't know any better I'd say that the audio on these camcorders was recorded with some external studio quality microphones it just sounds phenomenal the hot shoe here if you need to attach a flash or a speed light setup for taking still images and controls for photo start and stop and zoom as well as lock so if you're holding this using this handle you don't have to strain to grab these controls you just use them up here this microphone is acoustically isolated from the rest of the camera by way of this rubber dampener here you can see it's allowed to move freely from the grip here so it doesn't pick up rumbling and low frequency and handling noise from the tape mechanism and you're operating the camera behind this little flap you have the recording controls for uh, the tape transport and also recording to the DV tapes from its AV in jacks. battery that this camera actually came with is dead so I'll swap it out with this generic replacement see if we can get some power the viewfinder does pull out to accommodate larger size batteries also does tilt up and we'll see if we can get this to power on and yes it did you have some buttons to enable and disable the display and the data code self timer the LCD brightness and the volume and the vo and a reset button if things go bonkers on this camera and it stops responding or working properly I don't know if it's too obvious on this camera I'm recording with because it's set to a correct white balance but this camera is not it's not getting it right it's making everything ridiculously orange so what you need to do is just press this button here on the white balance and it automatically adjust itself I don't know if it was too noticeable on the camera but now it's the correct color to get to the menu all you need to do is just press this button by the battery and it's a very simple menu system not at all complicated all the access to all the different features are available immediately you can turn on and off the zebra which is useful for telling you if something's overexposed digital effects digital zoom the speed of the zoom handle button 16 by 9 and the C sharpness which sharpens the video some people like to turn it down but I fancy the look it has with it set to the default record mode windscreen on and off which I leave it off because it cuts some of the bass response of the microphone and the audio recording mode I set that to 16 bit the lens hood is able to be removed if you're using a wide angle or a fisheye or an accessory lens it just slides out of place after loosening the thumb screw and again you get a better look at the lens that way and then just reattach it you just put it on it slides on and then you just tighten this thumb screw you do get a tally light the remote sensor is located right below it so now what I'll do is I'll take the mini DV tape oh yeah that's one thing I forgot to mention so you just insert your mini DV tapes by opening this up and then unlike the GL2 you also have to press this eject button So what I'll do now is I'll take the mini TV tape out of this GL2 and I'll put it in this GL1 and show you the GL2. This is the Canon GL2 which I was using just a moment ago to record that video of this GL1 and you can get a better look at it. I'm not going to go too in depth. V Westlife has on his camcorder channel a video of this. The very same camcorder but you can see I have view meters enabled. You have some manual level, level controls. And if you look here, you also notice that there's a CR2025 battery, which is used for backing up the menu settings and time. And uh, let's see if I can get that in with one hand. This is also a hot shoe, but it also is an accessory shoe for genuine Canon branded accessories. You can see those, those, uh, well, that's not going to focus, but you can just barely see the connection at the topmost portion of the accessory shoe. This has the large sized eye cup which is flexible useful for using with eyeglasses or outdoor bright lighting situations and this came from a university in Indiana as far as I can tell same as the GL1 essentially the same oh there we go advanced accessory shoe 
you get the tally light. Behind this door, you have your headphone jack as well, in addition to the microphone jack. You don't have a switch to change the type of video recording mode from frame to normal. This allows you to change taking the pictures to either the SD card slot or the tape, which right here takes SD multimedia cards. And you can see the difference between the GL1 and the GL2 because this one you get some more functions with these buttons here, like AV insert and audio dub. And that GL2 that I just showed came with a boatload of accessories not the least of which being this heavy Canon branded carrying case. We have a Firewire cable, six pin Firewire cable, by a Sony, or rather a Canon, <laughs> high capacity lithium ion battery, BP930, and some accessories up here. Another Firewire cable, I think that's a uh, nine pin, I don't know what that is. And a Canon, DM-50 shotgun microphone, stereo, which is compatible only with the GL2 because the GL1 doesn't have an advanced accessory shoe. You have this platform for the camera to sit on, the DC dummy battery for running it directly off of AC power, and the charger, which is actually larger than I was expecting. And now I'm going to go ahead, take this tape, swap it back into the GL2, and do a quick demonstration and test of this Canon DM-50 shotgun microphone. It has three different positions. There's shotgun, which is mono, two different stereo settings, and if I move this, you can get a better look at the microphone, which is isolated from its stand somewhat, so you don't pick up too much tape noise. Oh, and the white balance is off again. There we go. Okay, so back on the GL2. Time to test this microphone. First we'll try it in shotgun. Of course not going to sound all that good because it's going to be pointing away from me. Okay, now this is on the shotgun setting which should be... I'll switch it over now to stereo one. And this should be left channel, right channel, rear center, front center, and it has a decent amount of stereo separation, but it sounds even better when I switch it over to stereo 2. So I'll keep talking and switch it over now. You probably heard a big difference in sound. Left channel, right channel, rear center, front center. Sounds very good. And again, this battery was working just fine. It's too bad I can't use this microphone with the GL1. It doesn't have an advanced accessory shoe or whatever Canon calls it. I think I got a pretty good deal. Has some firewire cables, some genuine batteries, a great sounding stereo microphone, and a nice secure Canon carrying case, which would probably accommodate the Canon GL1 and the GL2. It's so big. I've gone into a noisy and uh, reflective hallway, so you should definitely hear a nice stereo image as I move the camera around now. So I'm going to keep talking. I'm spinning the camera around. And let me open this door here. Maybe you'll hear this on, in stereo. Really, really excellent stereo image. And I might as well go ahead and unplug this microphone now and switch back over to its internal microphone. And we're now back on the internal microphone. So that will do it.